All right. I know it's been a lot of videos. There's been a lot of information thrown at you and we are almost done. But this last set of concepts we're going to talk about is scope and lifetime. Now, the material that I'm covering is A3.1 through A3.6. Uh, in, in the sense of the previous chapters where I sort of covered the concepts going on with them, but there are good applications for you to actually play with and get some good practice with and all that kind of stuff. So I do recommend that you look through those, but especially A3.7, because I'm not talking about that in these videos. A3.7 gives you some fun practice actually um, messing around with even more properties of uh, some of the different controls. Uh, so I really do recommend that you check that one out. So scope is essentially where a declared memory location, whether that be a variable or a constant, can be used in code. Because if you put a variable or a constant inside of a procedure, you can't necessarily use it anywhere within your code. Similarly, lifetime is how long that memory location can actually be used in code. Uh, when we're no longer using a memory location, computer actually frees up that space so it can be used for other things. Because if uh, memory just kind of sticks around and sticks around and sticks around, we might actually run out of memory and then the computer itself gets pretty mad and completely shuts down our program. So uh, we can only use our memory location for a certain amount of time. And then when we're done using it, the computer actually just gets rid of it. It says, hey, this isn't being used anymore. Let's disassociate the name. Let's uh, free up these the uh, shelves, you know, kind of toss everything out of them and let other programs use them. But both the scope and the lifetime of a memory location are determined by where in code they're actually declared. The first scope that we have is procedure scope, and this refers to any memory location that we declare within our procedures. For example, in the circle area um, procedure that we showed off, these were things like double area and double radius and double pi, because we defined them inside of the procedure. Uh, they can only be used within the procedure that they were defined in. So as soon as you type end sub, you're outside of the procedure and you can no longer use those variables. And you can't use the variables inside of any other procedures either. They can only be used inside of the procedure where they were defined. As soon as you hit end sub, and as soon as the, um, you know, the code actually hits it when it's running your procedure, uh, it just completely throws all those uh, memory locations out. Uh, if the procedure is called again, the previous values of those memory locations are not remembered because they were thrown out and they're just created again as if uh, they were created for the first time. So yeah, this is the circle area code. Uh, we know const uh, double pi variable double radius and the variable double area are all procedure level because we define them between this private sub button calc click and end sub right here. They're inside of the procedure, so they are procedure level. And you can also think about it as, you know, the indentation signifies that they're only alive at this level of indentation or at further down levels of indentation, but we won't worry about that just yet. Um, a variable that you declare is only alive at its level of indentation or lower if the level of indentation ever pops back up, that variable is deleted. So as soon as n sub shows up and it's uh, closer to the left side of the screen than the uh, actual radius and area um, declaration statements, those variables, as well as the constant double pi, they all just go away and you wouldn't be able to access them in button exit underscore click. Now, class scope is a little bit different. Um, these are declared in the class, but outside of any procedure. Usually you put them at the top of the class. So right after the class header and before the first procedure. Um, so they would also be declared in the uh, form classes declaration section, 
that that's what that is is that area between the class header and the first procedure but we would call them class level variables and constants now these class level uh, variables and constants can be used in any procedure of a class so not like because they were defined in the class but outside of a procedure they can actually be used in any procedure however they can't be used by other classes usually um at least the way we're working with them you can't use them they can't be used by other classes uh they're good for representing uh properties of a class or an object a class level variable we would declare by saying private variable name as data data type uh, equals initial value if we want to do that so we're saying private instead of dim in this case because it's class level the reason why we have to say private is because it's class level and it prevents other objects from accessing or modifying that uh, variable if it was public anyone would be able to any other object would be able to mess with that sort of like what you can do with properties of controls those properties are actually class level variables that are public but we use private so that no other object is able to. It's good practice. If you don't need to share it with anyone else, then keep it private. So here's an example application that accumulates scores. You, these are actually types in a score, maybe for like a game or uh, you know, if they're playing pinball and they're trying to keep track of like how many points in total they've scored or something like that, I don't know. But this is an application that lets them do that. So they type in the score and then they click the add button and that score gets added to the double total class level variable like that. And the nice thing is that after uh, button add underscore click ends, you know, this label gets updated and, and sub happens and it just, you know, the procedure actually ends, double total still sticks around because the application is still running, the form still exists and it is part of the form. Uh, so as long as the form exists, double total is going to exist and it's going to remember its value. And you can update its value too, like what's happening here. Double total gets updated with the old value of double total plus the score. So the value plus the score get added together and they create the new value which gets put into double total like that. So this actually sticks around. And like I said with the um, indentation stuff, because it's uh, at this level of indentation, which is the same level as all of the functions, it was declared above, you know, or to the left of everything that's happening inside of the procedure. So it can actually still uh, mess with stuff inside of the procedure, but it doesn't go away when this gets kicked back up here because um, this is still at the level of its declaration. If it helps to think about it, the shape of uh, indentation as determining what the uh, variables, you know, lifetime and scope and all that is, then yeah, that because it's indented uh, further to the left than everything that's happening inside of a procedure, uh, it is able to be used inside of any procedure and it exists after those procedures end. It exists as long as the form main, uh, the main form exists, which essentially is uh, it existing for as long as the application exists. Now class level constants are like class level variables, but constants. Uh, so they stick around for as long as that class exists. And in the case of putting them in our main forms class declaration, they will stick around for as long as the application is actually running. The way you declare a class level constant is in that uh, area between the class header and the first procedure, you write private const and then everything else is exactly the same. But you put private in front of const in order to say, you know, this is uh, class level. And it's the same thing that we talked about with uh, variables as well. If we did public const, then any other object would be able to access that kind of data, which might be fine 
sometimes, but it might not be necessary. And if it's not necessary, then you should default to putting private instead of public. So for now, just do private const uh, constant name as data type e equals expression. Uh, for example, private const double pi as double equals 3.14159. This is actually fantastic um, because if your circle area application was doing multiple calculations that involve pi, for example, you're calculating the uh, circumference of a circle as well as the area of a circle, then putting a class level constant for double pi like this makes it accessible to both of those procedures rather than just one of them. And it means you don't have to declare uh, that double pi in both procedures. You can just declare it once and you skip out on any mistakes that you might have made by having to write it down twice. Or, you know, if you have to change the value, you don't have to change it twice. You only have to change it one time. So the class level constants are a really helpful tool if you have uh, constants that are used between all the procedures. Here's an example with the um, circle area code with double pi as a constant. I'm partial, honestly, to making all of my constants class level, even if they're only used in one procedure. Uh, it just feels right to me. I don't know why, but it's not necessary. And actually, so some of the best practices or good practices or whatever that I'll talk about later actually will probably contradict what I just said. But that's what a private, uh, you know, that what a class level constant looks like in code. Now we have another interesting toy to play with called the static variable, which you declare using static instead of dim. But you still put it in a procedure. So it's a procedure level variable and it can only be accessed within that procedure, the declaring procedure, just like any other procedure level variable. So the scope is still procedure level. However, the lifetime is as long as the application is running. It remains in memory and retains its value even when the declaring procedure ends. So the procedure runs for the first time, the static variable is created, you do whatever with it, the procedure ends, the static variable kind of goes into hibernation. And then if you call the procedure again, the static variable reappears, and then you can do whatever with it using that pre-existing value that you uh, gave it the first time you ran the procedure. You know, you do whatever with it, and then it goes into hibernation after the procedure ends and so on and so forth. So static variables are really great for accumulating scores or value, especially if you only need to accumulate those scores or value in that one procedure, and it never needs to be used anywhere else. For example, here's that um, score accumulator uh, code that I showed off before. Uh, previously, this double total was actually a um, class level variable here, but now it is a static variable and it will function practically the same way. You know, it shows up in button add underscore click, but in this case, only button add underscore click can actually use it. No other uh, procedure in here can actually use double total, only button add underscore click. Now, the reason why you might want to do this is especially if you have a value and that you're only using in one procedure and you really want to make sure that nothing else can modify it. If it's like a very sensitive value, even if it's not a very sensitive value, if it's like any value that needs to stick around for a long time uh, and needs to be used in multiple calls of this procedure where you need to look at the previous value and all that kind of stuff, but nothing else needs to use it, that's the perfect use for the static variable. And that way you don't have to risk accidentally modifying it with another procedure or you don't have to risk accidentally making it public and then someone else modifying it without your knowledge or anything like that you know exactly when it's being modified. And that can be the tricky part about class level variables is that you may not have a guarantee of what that value will be because other stuff could modify it. You might even modify it yourself elsewhere by accident. And you don't have the safety that 
procedure scope gives you because you know that a procedure level variable is only being modified in a procedure. So static variables can give you the best of both worlds where you know exactly where something is going to be modified and it can only be modified in that particular procedure. Some good practices with this. Use the minimum scope possible. Anything that you only need in one procedure, just keep it in that procedure. Don't make it class level. That way you don't accidentally um, screw yourself over by accidentally retaining previous values or accidentally modifying it in other places or having someone else modify it because you forgot to make it private or something like that. Um, I think that's huge for class level variables is if they absolutely do not need to be class level variables, then don't make them class level variables. With class level constants, you're fine uh, leaving them uh, class level even if they're only used in one place. That's totally okay to do. Uh, the benefit you might get by making it a procedure level constant instead is that it's more relevant. You sort of have that context of like, um, this is what this constant does a lot closer to everything else in the function. So it's just easier for you to read and understand what's going on when you do that. Um, that might be a benefit, but you are at a lot less risk because it's a constant and you can't accidentally modify that value in code by accidentally using it somewhere that it wasn't supposed to be used. So that's more fine. Um, you should use class level or procedure level constants instead of hard coded values. Uh, I mean, use your best judgment here. Like I said before, when we were doing the pi r squared equ equation, right? Pi is a good choice for a constant because that's a more complicated number. It's a more meaningful number. People might not recognize exactly what it's doing. So it's probably good to say, hey, this is pi, you know, use a constant to make it the whole thing self-documenting so people know what it is. And that is especially true for any big important numbers other than pi, ones that aren't recognizable like interest rates or other um, irrational numbers that are really special, like uh, the golden ratio or whatever, like whatever you might use, sometimes it's really helpful to do constants instead of hard-coded values. You don't have to do it every time. You don't have to do it with the um, squared part of the pi r squared equation. That's probably not super necessary, especially because that's not like a named thing in the way that pi has a name. Two is just to the power of two in this case. It's probably fine. Um, Class level is great if it's used in multiple procedures. Either procedure or class level is fine if it's used in one procedure. It doesn't matter too much. Use your best judgment. And that is variable scope and lifetime. That's a discussion of where you're able to use variables that you create. If you create them inside of a procedure, you can't use them out of the procedure and so on. Um, and the lifetime, how long variables last and when their values get deleted. So these are both really important things to keep in mind as a programmer because you need to know where you're able to use your variables and you need to know where it's appropriate to define them so that everything that can use them is able to use them. So with that, you know, go through the apply the concepts lesson, um, especially the last section of that where it talks about the GUI design stuff. I I'm more interested in talking about the broad concepts here. So with the practical application stuff, um, you'll get a lot more out of it if you practice it yourself. So do read that. Um, that's my expectation is that you are reading those parts of the textbook. But that's all. Uh, thank you all very much for watching all of this.